Susan Jaffe is here for 20 years. She has been a principal dancer with the American Ballet Theater beginning when she was 18 and called to perform by Misha Marishnikov. She has performed almost all of the great roles. Her career at the American Ballet Theater ends on June 24th in a performance of Giselle. I'm pleased to have a ballerina that the New York Times called the quintessential American ballet ballerina join me for a conversation about a life in dance. Thank you. Uh, take me back just for, to the begin this, before we get to a last performance, to a first performance. It's just one of those great stories. You're in Washington, you're at Kennedy Center. You are a member of the Junior American Ballet Theater Company. Well, I had just been, um, I just joined the, the main company. I was there for three months. Baryshnikov is, at ballet, is the artistic director. Yes. He's already taken a shine to you. I mean, he's seen things about you that he likes. Yes. He saw me in the junior company yeah. and decided I had ballerina quality. It is Kennedy Center. Mm -hmm. It is what, uh, 1980, 79, 80? 80. Mm. And what happens? <laughs> oh. Well, I had been three months in the company and um, I was already dancing some soloist roles and was learning even some principal roles and um, it was very controversial because I was this new kid, you know, nobody knew who I was and um, and um, he had on the opening night, Gelsey Kirkland and Alec, um, Good night. Uh, no, huh? Gelsey Kirkland with Patrick Bissell. Ah. They were going to dance the Pas de Scalade from Le Corsair. And um, I had been in the studio with them, learning it when they initially taught it a couple months before. But, you know, I had walked into this studio. First, I thought it was a mistake when I saw my name up on the board. <laughs> and I walked into this studio. Actually, I think I remember I had to go up to the office and say, are you sure <laughs> that yeah. that's me, you know? So I walked into the studio with Gelsey Kirkland, Patrick Bissell, Alexander Gudenov, uh, Mariana Tchaikovsky, Fernando Bajonis, you know, these big ballet stars, and then me. And um, I remember Patrick Bissell. And you're 18. 18. Patrick Bissell was partnering me while, while I was trying to learn it. And he kept saying, you got a lot to learn about partnering, you know. <laughs> I'll teach you. Don't worry about it, kid. You know, he was, he was really sweet. Anyway, I, I sort of learned it, and then nobody else, you know, we didn't rehearse it because Gelsey and Patrick were going to dance it. Well, um, one day, two days before the opening night, Gelsey and Patrick did not um, come to the dress rehearsal, and Misha fired them. And he came up to me, and I think this is what I remember him saying. <laughs> I remember him saying, how do you feel about doing the Pas de Scalave on the opening night with Alexander Gudenov? And I, I, think I, I think I was so shocked, I, I just looked at him and said, I'm not ready. And he said, I think you'll be ready. <laughs> and so they just threw me in a studio with Alexander Gudenov and the ballet mistress, Elena Chernichova, and they rehearsed me like mad. And I went on the opening night. And all of a sudden, you know, there were so many interviews and um, you know, big articles that, that were put out and, you know, um, you know, I went from this nobody from Bethesda, Maryland to re replacing one of the biggest ballet stars in the dance world um, two days later. And the only thing I remember about that performance, so there are two things that make me know that I actually was there and that it wasn't a dream. Um, one thing was that I had a veil over my head at the beginning of the dance and this veil, I remember the curtain going up and I was in the wings and the curtain was going up and I could see the lights and you can always, you always feel this huge breeze of cool air coming from the audience, you know. So I was there and this thing was shaking, like shaking and shaking. So that's the only <laughs> thing I remember about the performance. And the other thing that I know, makes me know that I actually danced was that there's a photograph of me. <laughs> I had dancing. never danced with Goodenough before. No, no, no. Because he was a sort of new arrival. Yes. Emigre. He scared me. You know, this great big tall blonde. blonde. Yeah, just he was. It was an astonishing situation. And when you finished, you'd say, "How did I get through this?" Yeah, I don't remember. Oh. <laughs> and then three years later, you're the principal dancer. Yeah. 
It's been a great ride. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a great life. What has it given you? You know, when you're a young kid and you're looking at the ballerinas and you think, oh my God, what a wonderful life, you know, what a, they're so pretty and they're in those beautiful costumes <laughs> and they get to live in these fairy tale lands and, you know, yeah. life is beautiful at the ballet, right? Yeah. That a famous line. It's um, about entrances and applause. Yeah. And, and pretty things and lovely yeah. things. And, but I, what I didn't know was that dance, being a ballerina, was going to teach me so much about myself, was going to have to make me face all of my demons, all the dark sides, embrace all the dark sides, incorporate them into my life. You know, a lot of times it would just be so much easier to just say, I'm not looking, I don't want to see that, you know. But you have to as a, as a performer and being on the line like I was. I mean, it was really thrown out there so quickly that, that I had to embrace everything about myself and learn so much about myself in order to, to continue to dance. And, you know, at that time I was thinking, boy, I didn't know I was going to have to go through this. Mm -hmm. But in retrospect, it was the greatest gift, you know, to really know yourself like that. Because some say about you that one of the things that you have brought to dance is an extraordinary sense of being able to do just that. It is to, in a sense, understand the character. Yes. Whose story you are performing. Yes. And then to bring with it your own life experiences. Yes. Uh, in interpretation, in giving, as well as the physical demands, which is how am I going to jump from here to here, <laughs> and how do I get from here to here, and thinking about all that, yeah. as well as wondering about... Yeah, well, I, I of course, worked on the physical for the first ten yeah. years. Um, all physical. It later. was mostly, I mean, I, I didn't know, I mean, of course, I did your your cut out copy version of what yeah. you're supposed to do in a ballet. You know, here you're in love and you're happy right, right, you know, right, all right. that. Yeah. Smile as you leave. Exactly. Um, and then it, I was started to become so dissatisfied. You know, this can't be it. This can't be all. Why do I feel so empty? And um, one day I was in the hallway and an old flame from ten years earlier was in the hall. And I said, wow. What are you doing here? And he said, uh, well, I'm working with um, several of the principal dancers on their roles. His name was Byam Stevens, yes. and he's the director of the Miniature Theater of Chester in Massachusetts now. At, at that time, he wasn't. And I said, let's go have coffee. And he explained, <laughs> you know, what he was doing. And I remember I, I grabbed him. It was, I grabbed him and said, you have to work with me. And so we began with Swan Lake um, and there were things that you know we talked about and he pointed out that it would have never I would have never seen you know huge symbolic reasons why this ballet is so great changed your life as a performer changed everything it changed everything and the more we worked the more I went oh yeah this is what I want to do with the black swan and oh yeah this is what I want to do with the white swan and all my roles, I went, I went through all my roles, and um, I, like for example, uh, I did a Fall River Legend. I loved working on that. Yeah. Um, it was the, it was the story of Lizzie Borden, mm -hmm. and um, you know to know the customs. You know, in this ballet, in Lizzie Borden, it's it's not a well-known ballet, but it's an incredible dramatic ballet. Um, you know, you could get by as a dancer, not not even knowing, you know, what century you were in, or you know, what exactly, what were the customs of the town, you know. But I went through all of it to really know why this woman would have that um, would become so broken that she killed her parents. So it was an incredible experience to learn so deeply about this woman, you know. Well, after that. Um, and all even before that, I mean, I, I cannot stop. I need to know everything I can so that when I get out there, I actually become that person. Do you therefore, I mean, how many times has Swan Lake been performed? How many times has 
all of the great classics have been performed, do you see dramatically different visual performances uh, in terms of every company that does it? Because the companies are different, certainly, but also because the dancers interpret the performance, the role's different. Absolutely. Um, you, sometimes I'll be watching a performer and I think, I never saw that. I, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a different interpretation, but it's valid, you know, and I can see where they're going with that or why they did that, you know, and that's what's so great about watching other performers. Um, do ballet, do ballerinas help each other or is it such a competitive kind of thing that there's not much sharing? <laughs> well, in the, um, I think in the old version of ballet theater, when, when I first joined, I think it was um, the, the end of a very competitive time. And when Baryshnikov took over, it was because he created so many young ballerinas. You know, we were all growing up together at EBT. Um, there wasn't that kind of competition. And what's so beautiful about ABT now is that the competition is so healthy. You see people s standing in the wings cheering for their colleagues. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know if you see that in other companies, but it's, it's a big family. The worst time in your life was when he left. Yeah. Yeah. I had, it was a very... <sighs> I joined ballet theater. I was Baryshnikov's protege. He gave me everything. I didn't know what it was what it was like to fight for anything or to stand up for yourself. I didn't have to. I didn't even have to have confidence. He had it all for me. And um, he left. And all of a sudden, you know, no of course, Misha. no Misha. New directors come in with their own ideas, or you know. I want to make my own statement. Yeah. And if you're a new director, you probably want to go to some new dancer rather than to Misha's. Or even, you know, well, you know, maybe Misha liked her, but I like her. Yeah. Exactly. You know. And um, all of a sudden, you know, I went from first cast in many, many ballets to fourth. And how fifth. did you handle that? In your own words, in your own <clears throat> looking back, because you survived it. I did. But how did you panel? Well, I did for several reasons. One, because I tried to look at the big picture. Like, is this in, a, in the life of Susan Jaffe? What would this be teaching you? You know, what lesson is it? Is it, are you in this company to fail? Are you, did you become a ballerina under Misha's guidance? to fail now, now that you're just about to like sort of bloom, you know, into a, a much bigger space? Or is this to show you how, how much conviction you have? How much do you believe in yourself? How much um, um, uh, faith do you have in, in the art, your own talent, and your life? Why retire now at 40? <clears throat> When I was younger, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I prophesized this, but I remember saying, you know, when I'm 40, I'm going to retire um, because I don't want to look any less than my best. I'm a terrible perfectionist. Um, but the reason why now that I'm 40 um, was that because I worked so much on the dramatic roles in, in all the dramatic roles that I, I did, I became frustrated um, because I didn't feel that there was enough dramatic work. Um, choreographers, new choreographers, they, it's, it's very physical. They're exploring physicality and musicality, and um, it's not where I went. I went much more about the internal. Um, not to say that they're, it's all external, it's not, but it's, it's, it's a coming in from a different point of view. And um, I thirsting for dramatic. Yeah, but, but are you saying that in, in I mean, I, you clearly you are, I think, that, that in fact it was because you wanted to, it wasn't that, that you couldn't be a great dancer, but you wanted to do more and you needed to, to leave one place in order to get to this other place, which is primarily about acting. That's right. That's what I want. And 40 seemed to be the right time. Yeah. Why Giselle? 
as a concluding. It's not the last thing you do with ABT, which is coming up soon, isn't it? Or Gisela will be the last thing oh, I that did. That will be the last thing. I did right. ABT. Um, first of all, these at, at the Met Ball Opera. That's right. The schedule of the Met was made a year ago. Yeah. So it was before I decided that I would retire. So it actually ended up being a haphazard choice. But it's the perfect choice. Why? Giselle is a very, um, I, I find it a very spiritual ballet. There's a lot of um, deep um, symbolic things that happen to both of the, lead, the leads, the Giselle and Elbrecht. And at the very, very end of the ballet, I mean, she saves him because her love is unconditional. And the only way that she can finally go to rest is to, um, is to forgive. And her last gesture is that, and she saves him, you know, dawn, um, dawn comes and every, every adversity fades and it's just left with Albrecht and Giselle on the stage. And the last thing she says is, our love will last for eternal, you know, to eternity. And, you know, I've had such a deep, deep love for this art. And um, I always wanted to be in my heart of hearts that what I really wanted as far as if I was sitting in the audience. What I wanted to be for them was just a big mirror and just say, look, this is who you are. This is who we are. I'm a reflection of you. I'm a reflection of you. And that's the perfect message. I said to Beverly Seals here at this table not long ago, um, was there one performance where you felt like everything was perfect? You know, and she said, amazingly, one, only one, in which she thought it just, what, I couldn't have made it better, hmm. perfect. Hmm. Doesn't know why it happened that day, hmm. just knew w while she was in it, hmm. and when she finished, this was my single performance mm -hmm. that I will always cherish most, because it was without flaw. Right. You have many of those? I have more than one. I have one Swan Lake. I remember I got off the stage and I'll say, I said, I'll never do it better. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, but I'll never, ever do it better. And were you right? You've I never done Swan right. Lake. Yeah. I think I was right. Yeah. What, what do you do when you have that? What's the feeling for a dancer? I mean, are you floating? Are you hanging? Are you what? You're riding, I call it, riding the wave. And it's almost like you're on it and you can't get off and you're just there. You're not doing it. It's doing it for you. And you're just enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. Any ballet that you most wanted to do that you didn't do? Well, a couple, actually. Yeah. I really wanted to do Ashton's A Month in the Country. It's an incredible ballet. Um, I also liked um, Kenneth McMillan's Meyerling. Um, so these are all ballets in Europe. So um, those two roles I really wanted to do. But you know, I'm sure we all, you know, when we leave, think, God, if I just did that, if I just did that, you know, my life would have been complete. But how about partners? Mm. I've had who's many. brought up the best in you? Well, that's easy. That's Jose Manuel Carreño. Yeah. When he came on the scene, it was 1995, and uh, we did, he came to the Met, Metropolitan Opera House, and we danced Don Quixote together. And at that time, you know, he's a brand new partner, and, you know, it's very hard, you know, you don't know what somebody's going to be like on stage, you know. A lot of times you get somebody who's really sort of calm and cool in the rehearsal, and then you go out on stage and you think that they're, they're like that all the time and then all of a sudden you see the glass in their eyes and that they're not really present or, you know, if they're, they're nervous or even I get that, you know, we, we all have our moments. But the following year he joined ABT. Yeah. <clears throat> and we did a black swan pas de deux in Chicago. And I had such a ball. 
And he, he, when we got off the stage, I went to our director, uh, Kevin McKenzie, and I said, I want to dance with him. I got to dance with him. He's such a guy. <laughs> he's such a male presence behind me. He's so strong. He's so, he's such a guy. I've got to work with him. <laughs> and that's what happened. I mean, our energies, we have such a chemistry together um, that um, it just changed my whole, um, it changed my career, certainly, you know, because I was always alone. You know, I danced with this person, I danced with that person. Yeah. This was really a couple, you know. And I, he, he gave me such a um, security. He's an amazing partner that I could, you know, come flying at him in a double somersault, you know, with, you know. And he would be there. And he'd, and, uh, and he'd make me look beautiful, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Much success on Monday night, June 24th. Uh, Susan Jaffe, principal dancer, American Ballet Theater, will be dancing a performance of Giselle. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. And also, in the future. Much success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.